Hey folks, before I get into, you know, more important things, I just want to start this off by saying this is going to be more of a, a side LP, I think. Like, I'll probably do these sorts of things occasionally between... between bigger Let's Plays, I suppose. I'm planning on doing just little side things occasionally here and there, little short ones. This is going to be one of those. So uh, anyway, this is a game called 80 Days. Uh, it is an interactive, choose-your-own-adventure, explorey sort of thing, and it's really, really, really great, which is, of course, why I've decided to play it. Now, if the name sounds familiar, you might have heard of the, um, the classic novel by, I believe, Jules Verne is his name? It was written back in the late 19th century, which is also when the novel, and therefore this game, is set. Uh, so, anyway, it follows the story of a man named Phileas Fogg, and he is, he goes to this, like, prestigious club called the Reform Club in London, and him and his associates decide on this wager to go around the world in 80 days for, for lots of money. And Phileas is all, yeah, man, I'll totally do that, and it'll be great. But, uh, we, we don't play as him. We play as his valet, whose name is something like, ahem, Jean Passport 2. I believe that's how you say it. I might be horribly wrong, I'm, I'm not French, but I think that's how it's pronounced, but I don't know. So, yeah, I needed to give a little recap of the story, because once we start off here, I've played this game through several times, so it just doesn't give you the same intro that it does each time you start up, instead it gives you this little thing. So, um, I should mention, uh, I, I know I've said in the past I'm not really one to read dialogue in games, but this game is all about the dialogue. Like, all about the dialogue and all about the text, so I'm gonna be reading all the text and it'll be great, and I hope my voice is the right sort of thing for this. I don't know. <laughs> I suppose we're gonna find out. So, my master returned home from the reform club with a strange gleam in his eye. Passport too, said he. We're going around the world. Pack my evening jacket. There's not a moment to waste. And we now have funds. So as soon as I hit these two double arrows down here, the clock's going to start ticking and we're going to need to grab some things. So let's see what we win. I believe it's just a random drawer of, like, pretty much anything. Let's see. Uh, ooh, I think we can take all these. Train timetable, definitely. Evening jacket we have room for, vodka we also have room for, very good, we can actually take everything, amazing. Sometimes you don't get to. Now when you find a timetable like this, the game will show you all the routes that this unlocks for you, or all the routes you now know about. So since we know this was in North America, we can see a bunch of train routes in North America, and this is rather slow. But I'll show it in this case just to show sort of how finding routes works. Now we need to get the heck out before the train leaves. So at this point we can pick either Cambridge or Paris. I'm going to go with Paris because going to Cambridge is kind of useless. It takes you to one location, I believe. Um, I will explain all this when we have more time. Let's go. There's a lot going on in these little sections, and I will get to explain these later, but for now, you have to be quick at that opening section. I don't know if you can miss the train. It's never happened, but maybe you can. I don't know. So we leapt aboard the 825 from Charing Cross as the final whistle shrieked its warning. Our journey had begun. Now here's an option that comes up. You have an option to converse with someone you know about. Uh, so in this case, this guy knows about Paris. And we can, now when it says what's next down here, we can choose what sort of areas we can ask about. So we can say, hey, is it possible to go to here? And then it'll say, yeah, you can. And so on and so forth. Like... The good thing with these things is you want to plan ahead. You want to plan ahead when you're picking your routes later. Uh, I'm not doing well at explaining to begin, but I will attempt as things go on. Anyway. The Amphitrite Express rattled along narrow gauge rails to Dover, where its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel. Oh yeah, something I forgot to mention. Uh, the big difference between this and the novel is uh, it's a steampunk setting. So, there's crazy machines and stuff, like this, where the train goes underwater, and it's great. Anyway, Monsieur Fogg made no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows. I thought it so marvellous at the time, but how many marvels were still to come? Suddenly, from the corridor, I heard a cry. 
Ooh, I don't remember this coming up because the big thing about this game is all sorts of things can happen. Every playthrough you will see something different, I guarantee you. So let's see, I'm going to open the door to investigate because that sounds like a good idea. I open the door to investigate. Monsieur Fogg nodded just a fraction, evidently approving, though not feeling the need to undertake any similar action himself. In the corridor outside our apartment, I found a young man with a dapper haircut and brightly coloured waistcoat pacing about in, so in a state of some alarm. Um, yeah. Can I assist you, Monsieur? I acquired, somewhat puzzled by his state of agitation. You're not a thief, are you? The man retorted sharply. Uh, certainly not, Monsieur. No? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. I would have noticed if you had taken it, I'm sure. The man turned away and began looking around once more, quite hopelessly. Um, I want to pick one of the first two. Let's go with the first one. You have been robbed. My silver-plated cigarette case, the man moaned. It's worth a reasonable amount of money, certainly, but what I can't understand is how it disappeared. I was in my compartment, I took out a cigarette and put the case on the table, and the next moment it was gone. Um... And you were quite alone? Yes. Well, except for the lady. But she can hardly have just walked off with it, can she? Obviously, we'll keep with this. And what lady was that, Monsieur? I asked, as delicately as I could. Damn it all, I don't know, he exclaimed. The young lady sharing the compartment. She went off a few minutes ago. Um. Ooh. Let's try this. Is she coming back, I asked. I have no idea. I'm not a chaperone. He looked at me with a pitiful expression. I'm engaged. Um. Ooh. What to pick here? I'll try it. I will look for her, I suggested sensibly. The young man brightened a little. Would you? That would be awfully decent of you. Though I'm not sure how you'd know, know her when you saw her, of course. He chewed his whiskers for a moment. Perhaps you'll be able to smell the guilt on her. They say that happens. Um... I doubt it, Monsieur, but I will try. Very good. She'll have guilty eyes, no doubt. Check the eyes. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky, isn't it? We don't even know what she looks like. Um, let's try this. I looked into a few nearby compartments while I found several passengers, and some ladies amongst them, but none had the aspect or manner which suggested a thief. But let it be said I am not dedicated, and when I say I will do something, then I do it. That said, however, I do not always succeed in my endeavours. Despite hunting amongst high class and low, I found nothing. The lady in question had blended away quite seamlessly, and I could not rout her. I returned with bad news to the young man, who was glum but not surprised. The master of disguise, no doubt, he complained, clearly a higher class of thief. I left the man to his sighing and moaning and returned to my compartment. Monsieur Fogg looked up briefly, as though to ascertain that the status quo of master and man had been restored, before disappearing into the folds of his paper once more. So this is the sort of things that happen, like, basically you'll travel along and all sorts of events will happen, and there's lots of different sort of branching paths depending on what you do, what you say, that sort of thing. So. I think that is one of the main reasons why this game is really interesting, because there's so many things that can happen, like this whole thing that we just did here, uh, that hasn't happened to me before, in the several times I've played this, so that is something brand new. So there we go. Anyway, we continue on. Now when it's just going along like this, there's not a whole lot you can do, eventually an option will pop up like the converse one we had earlier, there's some other things that can happen as well. But otherwise, yeah, the game will just give you this. At, at certain points, a, a story event will come up. We splashed up onto the rails at Calais and closed the remaining miles to Paris... Ooh, Gare du Nord, quickly. <laughs> Words are hard, especially when they're foreign. As we crossed the bustling concourse towards the exit, I noticed the young man from the train once more. He seemed no calmer than before, and most eager to speak when I caught his eye. Did you find your cigarette case, Monsieur? I asked. The man shook his head. But then as I nodded and began to turn away, he caught my arm, voice dropping to a whisper. But wait a moment, I must tell someone, I did find something most odd. Odd how? I asked, intrigued. Odd indeed, he replied, and with that he reached inside his jacket and pulled out a most curious item, no less than a long-stemmed jet-black rose. What do you make of it? he whispered. Um... It was a fine specimen. It was freshly cut, the petals rich black with an inky luster. A most curious artifact. Suddenly an aging porter guiding a luggage automaton rounded on us. So it's true, he blurted. She is here? 
Now, by automaton, they mean a robot, because of course there's robots. Steampunk, they can do whatever they like in this. <laughs> um, ooh, let's see. I think the first option. I whirled on him. Who? A talk of the papers, the man replied. Look, he took out a nearby a copy from a nearby rack and shook it open. London police baffled as Black Rose Thief strikes again. Okay. Uh but who is this Black Rose? I demanded. That's exactly the mystery, replied the porter cheerfully. No one knows. Some say she's a pauper, a swift one, and others say she's a bored aristocrat. Either way, she's the most successful jewel thief there is. A thief on our train, I clutched our suitcase more tightly. But the young man at my side did not seem nearly so distressed. Do you realize what this means, he exclaimed. I've been robbed by a celebrated person. That's wonderful news. Gertrude will be ecstatic. Almost lovingly, she slipped the black rose back into his jacket before slipping away into the crowd. What a guy. <laughs> this is interesting. Hmm. I'm guessing there'll be more to this as we go. And we roll on. Looks like we're going to get to Paris soon. Right about now. So we have five hours, yes. So basically, if we want to, we can explore. That'll take time. Now, basically, when you're in towns, cities, whatever, you have several options. So first, there's the market. And what we can do is we can buy and sell things. Now, as you can see, our first suitcase is full. If we wanted to buy one of these, we would have to buy an extra suitcase, which is fine. We've got plenty of money at the moment. I think we might as well get the Caribbean timetable, because why not? We'll be able to see things. Um, worth, okay. And yeah, sometimes the game will say, hey, this is worth this much in this place. In which case, it might be a good idea to, to plan ahead and try to get to that location. It's really up to you if you want to focus on money or not. Because money can become an issue sometimes. Anyway, let's close out of this, and this will show us all the routes we got. Uh, yeah, you know what, we'll just skip ahead get the general idea here. We won't be heading that way for a long time anyways. Um, do we dare explore? Let's have a look. So when we select a part, we can choose to leave whenever. We can see that this one departs at 5 p.m. We've still got time to leave if we want. Uh, if we click embark, it should tell us. Yeah, so now to explain this. So basically, there's two things to, con to be concerned about when you're traveling. The first is the amount of space, the amount of luggage space the, the places have. Currently this one says 2 out of 4, we've got plenty of room for that. The other one is how bearable the route is. You may have noticed um, the image in the bottom right corner. That's that's not us, that's Mr. Fogg. And that's, that's his health bar. He has health! Yeah, crazy, I know. Um, now I have been to Zurich before, and that starts off something interesting, but I've seen it before, so you know what, why don't we just explore instead. So exploring tends to unlock more routes for you, and we'll see if it does here. It looks like it has indeed. We have an option going to Amsterdam and one to Nice. I think that's how you say that. Nice? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not nice. <laughs> oh, my geography skills are not great. I'm just going to throw that out now before it becomes a point of hilarity later. Let's see. The exposition Universal sprawled, across, sprawled over the grounds of the purpose-built Palais du Champ de Mars. Hot air balloons sailed gently across the sky, and the powdery light of the Yablokov candles gleamed invitingly. Ugh, there's going to be a lot of weird words in this. <laughs> um, ooh. Yeah, now this is, I think this is something that always comes up when you first explore Paris. I'm going to pick the first option. I was flooded with memories of the Siege of Paris, and my own small part in it. It was hard to believe that only a year ago I had been... And then we can pick our past, apparently, which is interesting. I guess it's not a huge deal. Let's pick the first one. I had been a blockade runner on the balloon post, which smuggled letters and communications over the Prussian forces by hot air balloon. Before my first run, an elderly artificer with a copper lily pin gleaming upon her collar had explained how to operate the burner valves and vents, and how to read the wind currents by spitting into the air. Now an artificer, we'll get more into those later, there'll be certainly more of those to see throughout. Basically they operate machines, and as we've mentioned there's a lot of machines in this, so that's what they do, they're like the operators, they explain how they work, or they maintain them, things like that. Anyway, um... 
I had been fearful and so listened closely to her instructions with my eyes wide and hands shaking. Alas, as an artificer, I cannot involve myself in matters of war, she said flatly, adjusting the lie of a copper lily pin. But you, poor boy, only wish to take this package of love letters to your sweetheart at whatever that place is. <laughs> um, Poitiers? I don't know. Ah, I understand you, Madam Artificer, I remarked slyly. I, she continued grimly, helping, helping to load another parcel of photographically sealed military documents and strategic communiques to the balloon, balloon's gondola, I'm taking pity on a poor, love-struck boy caught in the midst of war. Uh, let's see. Back then, I thought we would—I thought we would prevail. We would have to. That the other nations of the world would send aid. That our battalions in law would triumph and march to the city. I had thought our courage could stave off thirst and hunger and cholera, as well as Prussian guns. But Paris had surrendered, and the next month the Prussians rode their horses through the city in victory, while we ate Bismarck's grain and meat as promised in the armistice. I looked at the gleaming, peaceful streets of Paris now, and saw only war and siege. Uh, what is all this? Are these metaphors? <laughs> I snatched the Prussian airships from the I snapped the words. I snatched the Prussian airships from the air and muted the sounds of artillery. I doused the fires raging around the city and resurrected the horses, rats, and cats from their slaughter. I scrubbed the smoke from the sky and left only the pink-tinged ochre of the sun setting. I resurrected the Paris of my childhood, its gaily lit cafes and dark catacombs, its boulevards and gutters, its poets and radicals, its dark-eyed youths with whom I danced and kissed on the banks of the scene. I promised myself then that this is how I would remember Paris. It is how I would remember my city even now. And our character is now dependable. These are things that come up depending on what you say and do. I don't know what they impact really, to be honest. I they don't seem to impact much, I've noticed through through the playthroughs I've done. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, we will close out. Now, since we can't depart anymore, since it's past 5pm, we have the option of planning. So planning, we can basically see where we can go. Pausing and going into post-commentary for a moment to explain a mechanic of the game I genuinely had no idea about in all the playthroughs I've done. So you see fog in the bottom right corner there saying, I think this departure could be adjusted. I always assumed this meant like you could change the route mid-journey, like you could, you could change where you ended up going, but no. Apparently this actually allows you to make journey start earlier, like if you tap the speech bubble of him talking, you can pay money to negotiate and make journey start a day or two earlier. I genuinely had no idea this was a thing, even in this very playthrough, unfortunately. I don't know if that says something about the game's tutorial or my own incompetence, but I think the reason I didn't discover this until just recently is because there's never any other point where you have to tap on Fog's speech bubble. There's nothing that ever says you can really do that. So I guess that's why I never figured this out until I was randomly looking up stuff on the game after this playthrough. So if you're looking for high level 80 days gameplay, you're not going to find it here. Anyway, back to it. Now that is in two days, and that's going to take a while. Going to Nice is in three days. Oh, I may have made a bad decision already. Tomorrow at four, okay. Tomorrow in two, oh no, in two days. Well, yeah, I think heading over towards Venice is going to be our best option here. Uh, and we're going to need a hotel soon. Which we might as well do now. Nothing, so basically time still ticks on. But it's usually at times like this where it's a good idea to plan before you end the day. So we will go and hotel it up. And I believe we start the next day at, is it 7.30? 6.30? I can't remember. 6.30. We took a hotel for the night. We will be comfortable here, Monsieur Fogg remarked, but traveling overnight will often be more efficient. Uh, so we must board the longest journeys available, perhaps, he replied. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. So yeah, usually hotels, you'll just get little things like that. Uh, I should probably also explain, like, the bank. So most most cities will have the bank available. And uh, what that does is you can withdraw money from there if you need to, so you can have more money on hand. But it takes a certain amount of time to do, depending on how much you get. So I'm sure there'll be a part in the game where we need to do that. So I'll show that when it happens, because I'm sure it will. 
Uh, yeah, and as Fog says down there, if we want to, we can tap the clock to just pass time forward. We don't really need to, but the option's there. Uh, now then, we do have options. Where? Well, I didn't see this option. Amsterdam. That one departs before 5. When you see something that departs before a certain time, that means it'll depart as soon as you select it. So that is tempting. But going to Ven- I mean, we can head all the way over to Istanbul here. But I feel like I've done that before. You know, we might go over to Amsterdam instead. Now, as we can see, we have two we have two suitcases, but we uh, we don't have enough room because they only have one. So what we can do is we can hire a second car for 45 pounds, and there we go. Now we've got enough room. As we can also see here, Fog will lose five health on this journey, which is not a big deal because he's got plenty of health. But but it's something to keep an eye on. Trust me. I have also failed to mention, um, I'm playing the iOS version of the game. Uh, there is also a, um, I believe there's a Steam release that came out a little while ago. I'm not sure what that plays like. I'm sure it's similar to this. Anyway, we found a member of the Coachmakers Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded the cases onto the back, stoked the boiler, and took off at high speed along the coastal road, swerving around each corner with considerable skill, and I think, um... Uh, a touch of recklessness. I clung on tight. This would be a terrific ride. Yeah, fog approves. Uh, converse, that's always a good idea whenever you can. Let's see here. Amsterdam. I don't know what's close. We can try Berlin. Um, Berlin might be close by? Yes. Berlin to where? Helsinki's sort of close by as well, right? Uh, that's interesting to know. Ah, and we have vodka on us. So when you have a certain item sometimes, um, what will happen is you can use that item when you're conversing with someone, and that'll give you an extra, like, an extra thing you can say. Because basically, you, when you say too many things, they just get tired of you and stop talking. Uh, where would we want to know about? We might say Amsterdam, see if there's any more places we could potentially go from there. Cambridge, I don't think so. Um, Copenhagen? I don't even know. Ah, there we go. Uh, and from there, let's just pick places. <laughs> well, we discovered a few things there, so that's good. Ah, uh, Copenhagen's that way, okay. Anyway. Once or twice, the metal rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff more of the engine. Um, <laughs> we must have topped 40, perhaps even 50 miles an hour. Uh, honestly, I think the second that doesn't sound fun. A ghastly state of affairs. The Polish inventor Bozek, who had first attached a perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate, had a lot to answer for. Uh... I set about concocting ways to ease our suffering. A jacket stuffed under the behind, a shirt wrapped around the ears, jaw clenched, stiff, up a stiff lip, and prayers muttered. Uh, I attended to Monsieur Fogg, concerned that he would be suffering as I was. Somehow I had to ensure that we did not travel in cars again. It'll, it'll probably happen anyway, let's be real. Anyway, we made it. First thing to do, as always, is check the market. Uh, what have we got? Ooh, that is very nice. That's very tempting. Galoshes, seafarer set, okay. Shaving kit. Now, this is part of the valeting set. This, if you see something that's part of the valeting set, take it. Just take it, trust me. I'll explain how this stuff works later, but for now, if you see a valeting set item, just grab it, because they're going to be very, very helpful. Now, that's worth... 7,300 pounds in Munich. Where is that and can we get there? Uh, hmm. Was Munich? That's down there. I don't know that we'll be able to get there. Which is quite unfortunate. So we could go to Berlin or Copenhagen. That departs tomorrow at 8. Oh, two days. I do kind of want to go to Berlin though. Because I think going up to Copenhagen, there's nothing wrong with it, but again, that is something I've done before. 
Um, hmm, but then I'll have to wait here for two days. I don't know. I'll think about that. There's nothing else we can really do. We can check our items. That's all well and good. Let, let me exit. Thank you. <laughs> have to tap the right part of the screen, apparently. So, we will just hotel and then see what our options are tomorrow. Now as you can see, Fog's health went back up. When you when you rest at a hotel, Fog will gain his health a little bit. That is one of the ways he can restore health. There are a few others as well. Though the people of Amsterdam move about its canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheer. Um, our own mission left little time for exchanging pleasantries. I found a street peddler who greeted me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like moustache. That is a great description of a moustache. Um... There's usually humorous things when you say we are going around the world, so let's do that, because it's great. We are going around the world, I declared. Aha, he replied. You were like the influenza. The peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple? One pound? Oh, why not? It's one pound. I bought it and took it with a smile. Uh... What's the fastest way on from here, I asked. Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canals used to be better, but now they seem almost out of date, he sighed. It is a curse to be rich in the past. By the time the future rolls around, you are poor again. Maybe you'll be rich again sometime, I remarked. More from sheer optimism than any true conviction. Uh, I guess we can ask the other question as well. What is the cheapest way out of the city, I asked. He mused. Most likely the hydrofoil leading, leading north to Norway, he shrugged. It is fine enough, if you don't mind being jolted about. And it's not exactly going around the world. Unless you don't mind which way. Uh, is it fast? Two days, I think? I thanked the peddler and moved on. So many choices. All that remained was to choose best how to depart. Okay. And yeah, when it said our funds have gone down a touch. That was the, the one pound for the apple that we bought. I assume that it isn't actually here. Yeah, look at that. What do we do with those? Of interest to official earnest and soldier type. So it'll tell you what an, uh, what an item is interest of to what kinds of people. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Copenhagen's leaving. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on heading that way anyway. That one's going there. <laughs> Words are hard. I'm still thinking Berlin. Because if we zoom out a bit, there's plenty of plenty of places to head through Russia, so I don't know, we'll think about that. Uh I guess let's see. Just double check the market again. It's part of the seafarer set. Maybe we'll hang on to this because why not? I'll explain what sets do later when they come up. I would like this, but not enough, because I don't think we're gonna go via Munich. I don't. Which is a shame. So I guess we ooh, the bank's open. Let's check the bank, actually, since we're going to be leaving tomorrow. It might be a good idea. Monsieur Fogg looked up from his ledger. We are due a visit to the bank, I think, passport to. I regarded the bank as we entered. It was a small affair, but efficiently looked after, and we were quickly seen to. You with to withdraw funds, we were told? I warn you, it may take some time. Oh, right, damn it, it's the weekend. So, banks aren't open on the weekend. And uh, that's pretty annoying in this instance, because how banks work is usually, you can see there's three options here, well, four, I suppose. The first option will usually be the next day, you'll get that money the next day, you have to return to the bank to get it. And then the other one will be like a day later, and then another one will be a certain amount of time. Uh, in this case, these options are not good, so we're going to say we can't even afford a single day. I declared, we swept out of the bank. Thankfully, our situation is not desperate, my master declared. Onwards. Would have been nice to get some extra money, but that's okay. We don't really need it. So I guess we'll spend the rest of the time exploring. Maybe we'll discover some new routes here. And we have indeed. Aha! That is tempting. That is tempting. That is very tempting, I must admit. Now, when does that leave? Tomorrow at 11. That is... Hmm. You know, I might do that. 
I might just do that. So we'll take this lost Rembrandt because we'll be able to sell it for a stupid amount of money in a little bit. And Fog said something and I missed what it was. Because that happens sometimes, it's like a weird thing where if you go out of like the text too quickly, that happens. It like gets rid of the, the um, his text, it's strange. So we will eventually be able to head to Istanbul from there. There might be another way we can go on the way. Just it's always good to check ahead. Yeah, there's hmm, lots of open space elsewhere, but we'll figure something out. Ah, uh, yes, back here. And we will use the old hotel. Get used to the hotels. <laughs> that's how, that's what they're for. You need to use them all the time. Now, this is a case of, um, this is a case of a few options. Like, sometimes if there's not an event that would otherwise happen, you'll just get this where you have a choice of something to do. So with what remained of the day, I either washed and hung a linen, ran a few errands for the hotelier, or went to stretch my legs. So I believe the first one is like you tend to fog and thus he gains a bit of health. The second one is if you do that, you'll get a little bit of extra money. And the third, I'm not sure, I think sometimes you can find new routes that way or get a little bit of information. But I know money's not a huge deal, but I'm going to pick the second one, I think. With what remained of the day, I ran a few errands for the hotelier, earning 90, uh, 90 pounds. Later that evening, I returned to my room in time to see someone leaving. Ooh. I called to them, but without turning, they began to run. Ooh, this is interesting. Stop, thief, I called, but the figure only disappeared. I returned to the room, but was relieved to find nothing from her belongings appeared to be missing. We had been lucky, this time at least. I wonder if that's the thief they were talking about earlier. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm, I wondered why he said that. That's okay. So, we want to head to Munich, don't we? Yes. Arrives Monday. Hmm, I neglected to notice that. It's going to take a while to get there. This is a part of the strategy of the game, figuring out where you want to go and how, how much time it's going to take. We've got plenty of money, so that's not a problem. I do want to do it, because we'll have even more money and it'll be great. Yeah, I'm going to do it. This is probably not the smartest decision, but we'll do it anyway. <laughs> So we go along a little river. We boarded a small barge docked by the canal side. Monsieur Fogg appeared skeptical. Our goal, he reminded me, is to circumnavigate the entire globe in less than three months. This boat to me looks capable of less than walking speed. Hmm. I wonder if that changes if I pick the second one. I mean, he, he does have a point, and maybe this is a terrible decision. Because, like, we'd be on, like, day eight if we zoom out. We'd be on, like, day eight from there, and we would have barely gotten anywhere. But the money! Hmm. Yeah, maybe this isn't the best idea in hindsight. I'm gonna try picking the bottom option. Perhaps he was right. I waved the boat away. We would need a different approach. Very good, he replied, accepting my word on the matter. The rope was released, and we took off from the bank and began very slowly to pace our way down the river. Hmm, so we still ended up getting on? I guess so. Uh, converse again. And we have someone. Now, we know we can get to... somewhere. Where was it? <laughs> it went to Istanbul, right? There's not an option here, though. Again, let's just pick something. When in doubt, just pick options. Let's check. Oh, it would go to Vienna, yeah. That's fine. Uh, 
Okay, so... There must, my master reflected thoughtfully, be some way to make this barge move a little faster. It is powered, after all. Indeed, there is a boiler and a paddle. He nodded. See to it. Um, hmm. And if it cannot be done? It can, he asserted. I left the cabin and went up on deck. It was certainly true that we were crawling. We had left the canal and joined the Rhine, and working against the current, the boat seemed seeming to barely... Oh, the boat seeming to barely move at all. Jeez, <laughs> words are hard. <laughs> I've said that several times this video already. Um... Ooh. I went to look at the boiler, but it seemed to me a most simple affair. Coal in, steam out, and only so much coal would fit. Hmm. I went to talk to the barge pilot. While revealing my purpose might make her uncomfortable, it was possible she knew a way to achieve my master's goal. Um. Hmm. Is there any way to go faster? The pilot nodded. You can do a little more if you shut the flue on the boiler and keep the steam in. Ooh. Do I sneak off to do it, or do I ask? I think I'm going to sneak away. I slunk away to try it, finding the flue in the boiler room easily enough. Ooh. Let's see what it said again. You shut the flue on the boiler and keep the steam in. Hmm. I paused. If it was so simple, surely the boat would always be run at its top speed? Ooh, this is interesting. Hmm, I'm gonna do it, because I'm an idiot. I pushed the flue closed. To hell with it, some risks must be taken. The response from the engine was immediate. It began to roar inside with a deep throaty sound, and the boat began to plume through the water. My master would be most pleased. I'm sure something's gonna happen because of this. Surely. Like, I don't see this ending well. Ah, now, we only have the option to wait here. So, waiting tends to not do much. You just read a headline from the paper. Occasionally, you'll get, like, a route discovered because of this, or information discovered, but it's quite rare, to be honest. Like, in that case, we didn't get anything. Now, wait again. So, I believe each event when you're traveling, it seems to happen at 10 p.m. That's for, that's for the most cases, except for like sometimes when you stop by a town or something, then I guess it'll stop there instead of at 10 p.m. every time. Anyway, I woke to find we had made excellent progress overnight. Monsieur Fogg was overjoyed. He tied his own cravat, even combed his own mustaches. Munich by this evening, he remarked. A very good outcome. Uh, we don't need to... We don't need to be like that. Let's just do the second one. Indeed, Monsieur, I answered demurely, content in my knowledge of a job well done. It was that moment, of course, that the boiler decided to overheat. The stovepipe flew off the back of the boat, and we slowed to a full halt. Oh no, I knew this was going to happen. Um, I raced above to see the problem, but it was clear there was no easy solution. The barge pilot was scratching her head with an adjustable spanner. I can't see how it happened, she sighed. I had tuned the engine just right. Ooh. Ooh. Let's do it. I confess my action, and the pilot was not furious, but clearly somewhat disappointed. Well, sir, I'll fix it, but please, don't do that again. I assured her vigorously I would not. Monsieur Fogg or no Monsieur Fogg. Not until evening that the barge began to move once more. Ah, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. I wonder if there's a way to ensure that that works. There probably is. Like, because sometimes you can do things with certain items. Like, I think you can get, like, a spanner and stuff. So maybe you can do something with that. Oh, yeah. And sometimes you'll just talk to Fog. Uh, but, but, uh, it doesn't really matter what we say. We know that he's made a wager. And, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this was, I don't know about this. <laughs> it's day seven already. <laughs> the barge moved across the steady waters, not too fast and not too slowly. There was nothing else for us to do, 
So Monsieur Fogg involves himself with the newspaper, and I pass the time studying... The apparel of passers-by. German fashion is a little behind the Parisian styles, but it has a certain balance of practicality and flourish that I confess I admire. There are certainly more women who have embraced dress reform here than in London. I counted only a tenth in corsets, if that. Interesting. <laughs> Looks like we'll finally make it. Jeez. Uh, yeah, this may not have been the best choice. Hey, look, we're in the papers. Yo. Well, not us, but our master. Now, we finally arrived. We moored at a dock close to Munich, and closed the remaining miles in the back of a Bozet car, and designed much the same as the boat, but on wheels. Still... At least I was not responsible for its slowness. We arrived in Munich just as night was falling. Looks like we'll get there at six. Yep. And we know we could make money. I guess we'll sell things before we end it off here. So, cha-ching! There you go, now we've got all the cash. Hmm. Ship times. Greece and Turkey. We might as well take this. Hmm. Babylon, Zurich, Plague, and Sophia. Are we near any of those? I'm not sure we are. Oh, okay, so they go down and around that way, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the market closed! Ah, that's annoying. I was gonna get more things, but I can't now. Alright. We will hotel. And then I think we'll leave it there, because this part's gone on for a little while, hasn't it? Just see what our options are here. As I have previously noted, the Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year previously. Uh, ooh. Thus, my French accent was at a disadvantage during our short time in Munich. The concierge of our hotel was most suspicious when I approached the desk. I did not care for politics myself. What was the enmity of nations to me? Um, still, in order to avoid any untowardness, I... Uh, I don't want to put on an accent, that wouldn't be smart. I spoke as little as possible during our stay, and tried to adopt a ger bleh, tried to adopt a Germanic rather than francophone expression to match, perhaps with mixed success. If Monsieur Fogg's faintly quizzical looks were any measure, and our relations with Fogg have improved, so we can get affinity with him. I think that just affects like the ending. It doesn't seem to do too much else, but I'm not certain on that. It might be different. Anyway, this one's gone on for quite some time. Where's the pause menu? There it is. Let's leave it off here for now. So, as I said, I do plan on this being a short one, but it might not. I mean, this was this was about 40 minutes. Gee, wow. Uh, it might be longer than I've expected, but that is probably because I have to read a lot of things and talk a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, this is just a little side thing. You don't have to watch it if you're not interested, but, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, we will continue on with this next time. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.